Hi, I'm Paul, the Outdoor Movie Guy, and I have over 10 years experience in the outdoor movie industry. Today we're going to talk about movie licensing and specifically the Disney releases for 2023. So to show a movie outside to a group of people in a public location, you do need to get a movie license. That movie license you're looking for is called a non-theatrical movie license. So the information I am going to present to you right now is for the USA. So you may have something very similar in the country that you're in, but this is specifically for the USA. So in America, the movie licensing for Disney films is represented by Swank Motion Pictures. Every year, typically around this time of year, which is in December, they release a Disney blackout window. These are times when movies cannot be shown, certain movies cannot be shown. So for example, if a new Toy Story movie came out, Toy Story was a Pixar movie, while that movie was in the movie theater, all Pixar movies would not be available for a certain time period. Same with Marvel, because that's also Disney. If there was a Marvel movie in the movie theater, all Marvel titles would not be available for outdoor screenings while that movie was in the movie theater. Well, great news this year. They've changed it all around a little bit. They've moved from a blackout window to moratoriums, and that is being a lot less restrictive and it's going to allow you to plan those summer movie series just that little bit better. So let's quickly take a look at what they've done. I'm just going to cut this over right here and have a look at my own sheet. So this is the replacement to the blackout window. This is the moratorium and you'll see it is a lot less restrictive. There's lots of individual titles put on the here. Some of them are due to new releases. If we, we scroll down about halfway down there, there's Guardians of the Galaxy. So you'll see Guardians of the Galaxy is not available from April through May, not available. One and two are not available because there's a new one coming out in the theater. Once that's done its theatrical run, you will then be able to show one and two for the rest of the season. And then later in the season, I think it may be August, the third one's going to be available for licensing as well. And there's a few other movies on there like that, but it's a lot less restrictive than it used to be. Also on this list, I've noticed there's a lot of movies that do have milestones. So I see A Christmas Story. That's one of the ones all the way at the top right there. Christmas Story, it's its 40 year anniversary. So there's a period over the holiday season where that is not going to be available. I'm also seeing Elf. I cannot believe Elf is 20 years old, but that is not going to be available. Basically, November and December, that's going to be not available for licensing. The Gravity's there. National Lampoon's Vacation, that's 40 years this year. The Exorcist was 1973, that's a 50 year one. And The Haunted Mansion, which is 2003, that's a 20 year one. So they have certain times of the year where they're not going to be available. But that's just the individual title, not the whole whole way through. So that's uh, that's really great to see. When you're planning your outdoor movie series, there, there's a lot of resources available. Often Swank is a really good place to go. One reason is they do have the Disney title. So if you're trying to plan a summer movie series for a parks and recreation, or maybe for a school, they have those kid-friendly, family-friendly movies uh, readily available. They also release, they have the Disney window of stuff, and then they do release a catalog every year. So they just released the Disney window, sorry, which is now the moratorium. They released that and they also released their spring catalog. So if you are planning your series, definitely look at the catalog and that's going to help you. I'm going to put that in the link below. I'm going to put the moratorium in the link below and let's have a real quick look at the catalog. All right, so here we have the 2023 Swank catalog. They do tend to bring a couple out each year. This is the one at the beginning of the year that will have most of the anticipated new releases for the year, and then they'll bring another one out later. But this is a great way, if you're looking to do that planning for your outdoor movie series, getting this catalog and flipping through it is a great way to do that. So let's have a look through it. First page, of course, you've got your, your table of contents. We have new releases first, then you're going to move into the themed pages, which we'll touch in a minute. They're a really great way of doing it. And then it finishes off with all the favorites. The themed 
and content that Swank has produced over the years has improved greatly. And if we look on the next page, they have a great sponsorship guide. They have promotional materials. So say you're wanting to advertise at your location. They have studio approved images that you can use. They door hangers, posters, all these things. They help you create. So that's a great resource. And then there's the themed programming ideas, which we'll see in a few minutes. And then the resource hub, that's a digital thing. So you can go check that out too. Beginning, we go through all of the new releases. I'm not going to go through every single one, but I will have you look right, whoops, this way, right here on a lot of them, you're going to see anticipated. This one is 2023, 20, 23. When it says anticipated, that is assuming they normally they're really good. Those dates are correct. However, if a movie has a really good run at the theater, sometimes those dates will get pushed back. Maybe a streaming service will get exclusive rights to it and it may get pushed back. It's very, very rare that happens. But as it says anticipated, if you're trying to do your movie right around that anticipated date, like right on the date or a few days after, maybe have a backup just in case a backup movie that you could possibly use if it does get pushed back. So we're going to do a couple of the highlights. This is an interesting one. The Hotel Trans Transylvania, it's an Amazon original. We don't normally get the opportunity to get movie licensing for that, but this is one that will have that. I think it's going to be super popular when it comes to Halloween. And we'll go through these. And again, there's going to be a link right below so you can find them yourself and take a look at that. So we have Top Gun Maverick. So both Top Guns at some point during the year are going to be available. This is actually saying Maverick is available right now. So I know it's going to be a huge summer draw. Maybe you do one week the original, the following week you're doing Maverick, or maybe even a double feature, one after the other. Both really, really good movies. I think that's going to be super popular. Other movies that, with the moratorium, you're going to see that Ant-Man movies were not available during certain parts. That's because there is a new Ant-Man movie coming out. Same with Shazam as well. Fury of the Gods. Is that dogs or gods? Gods. It's a long way away. My eyesight's not as good as it used to be. And we'll just quickly go through these. Oh, let's go back. Here we go. Guardians of the Galaxy. So we looked earlier, Guardians of the Galaxy volumes one and two are not available in April, April and May, I believe it was. That's because this is the new movie that's coming out and you'll see we have an anticipated, whoops, that way, anticipated date of 8 5 23. So by the end of the summer, all of those should be available. We've got some Barbie. Creed is another movie that's number one and two are not going to be available during parts of the year. And now we'll get to the next section. So this is their themed programming guide. Different months have different themes. So there's Black History Month. We have Valentine's Day, Women History Month, Earth Day, all various things like that. So if we go through these pages, if you're a Parks and Rec or a school, you may want to use this to theme some of your movie nights. So it gives you some really good selections, some ideas for movies that you can show. And then one of my favorites is Halloween is great. Holidays are great, but dive in movies that absolutely wonderful. So with a dive in movie, you can get that screen right by the edge of the pool and then reproject if it's that type of screen and watch a movie, have a movie in the pool, which is a lot of fun. Jaws may not be the movie if it's for little kids, but maybe Finding Nemo or something like that will be a lot of fun. And then we got Date Night. So the Date Night movies, as they kind of indicate right here, really good for the wineries. Teen Nights. So you've got your, your top 50 all time. These are popular every year. Some of my favorites on this one are Ferris Bueller's Day Off always gets a great crowd. Down here we actually have over there, The Goonies as well, always a popular movie. Back to the Future and then around Halloween, Coco is just such a, such a wonderful movie. And there's the other ones as uh, you'll see Grease at the top, Hocus Pocus, always super super popular, always look good on the big screen. Something that when you're looking at movies and if you have a very well lit area, you, you of course have to wait for the sun to go down, but if it's really well lit, you don't have control over the lights, try and find a different location. But if not, maybe consider trying to do animated movies rather than uh, a live action that's really dark in color. So if you're showing, say, 
a Batman movie, it's a very dark image on the screen. So if, to really get the full appreciation of that, you need the, the environment to be as dark as possible. So if you cannot guarantee that in the location you're looking to do it, maybe, you know, shy away from those darker movies. A lot of the DC movies are very dark palette. Move away from those and stay with animated stuff and your audience is going to get a better experience. Always wait. We wait, typically wait for 10 minutes after sunset at a minimum to give you a good viewable image. And, and again, you know, if you choose an animated movie, it's going to be brighter. If you're choosing a live action movie and it's a very dark movie, just have that in the back of your mind. How am I going to make this community event happen? Well, they have a great sponsorship guide. So that'll have sponsorships for like sponsor, screen sponsor, licensing sponsor, and they have a whole guide that you can fill in. You'll be able to send to people and that'll help you get funding for one of your movies or a way to make that happen if, if that is an issue for you. And then again, it's showing you all of the different movie, movie studios that they represent. Again, if you're looking to do anything for Disney, which is that's Disney, that's Star Wars, that's Marvel, that's Pixar. You do need to go through Swank for the licensing. The other company is Criterion. They do not carry the same titles. So maybe check them out. If there's titles that you can't find on Swank, then you're going to have to check out Criterion. Sometimes movies are not licensed by either one. Some of them are just not available. Some of them you'd need to go to the actual distributor themselves to, to get the, the, mo the movie studio itself to get the licensing rights. And then for some, I think it's Sony Classic Pictures and a couple of others, there are other licensing groups, but the majority of the movies are either done by Swank or Criterion. And that is the back of the catalog. Anyway, if you do have any questions, definitely pop them in the comments below. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great one. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye.